Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Mandy and we're gonna do, I hope, a negative space swipe on this 12 inch round with this random idea that popped in my head. So my stepdaughter's here with me and she helped me with the color selection. So hopefully it's gonna turn out, I'm gonna use a uh, color place bright white satin from Walmart as my pillow. I like this more and more all the time. <clears throat> but I do have a mixing video below. Um, if you're curious what I use, just know that in that video I use Glidden Premium Eggshell, which I still think very highly of. But I like this one as well. It has really good viscosity, doesn't really have any bubbles very often to deal with, which is, as you know, a big deal. Um, let me show you the can while well, some people have asked to see it. It's messy, so I don't know what good it'll do you, but this is what it looks like. And again, it has paint all over it, so I don't know how helpful that was for you. But Anyway, we're going to lay it down. Uh, this is a 12 inch wood round from Low Leap Effie. It's a cradled wood board. I love them. And I'm going to have to stock up soon. But I also don't have my puppy pool out here, so we're living on the edge a little bit. We have moved the chairs back, mostly because I need to be able to see what I'm doing and my, my hand needs to be level with the turner. I do have little screen guards I usually put up, so don't be upset at me <clears throat> over there. Um, plus, I want Chrissy to be able to see, too, and she's across from me. So, hope everybody's doing well. So, the idea I had that popped in my head is I was like, I want to use Envy from Prison Pour. And, <clears throat> which is from Color Art. And then Pretty Petunia from Color Art Prison Pour. So, I'm going to show you these colors while I'm talking. This is Envy. I hope you can see well from where you are. This is Envy. It's gorgeous. And then Pretty Petunia. Just got paint on my glasses again. I'm not using the right paddles. Pretty Petunia. Also super gorgeous. And I was on the fence about whether or not to include waterfalls, but I really love it. I think it's a beautiful color. So in it goes. And... I'm going to use Parrotfish Green Boom Gel, which is one of my favorite colors. So while we're talking, uh, the Prism Pour comes from Color Art, and so does the pigment I haven't shown you yet. You can get 20% off from anything on Color Art's website using my discount code below, which is all lowercase Mandy1120. Um, boom Gel Stain, as well as Australian Floetrol, you can get from Pixel Paint Designs. Using Mandy15, save yourself 15%. So great company um, I'm not sure if she still has Australian flow, flow, flow trawl in stock but she ships from the US very reasonable prices so before I forget to tell you don't forget the description box and this is our surprise visitor which is Isadora from the new bling it set it's so gorgeous so we're gonna use a blue black cell activator uh, from Atelier Interactive, which is one of my favorite cell activators. Um, again, my ratios and mixtures are below. I do use uh, Australian Floetrol. Um, I'm not opposed to American Floetrol, it's just sometimes it's just easier. You know what I mean? So I'm going to start, I'm going to do things a little weird. I'm going to start with the boom gel and then I'm going to add it in somewhere else along the way. Um, a tip for you guys when you're using boom gel the little spout can get clogged, so make sure that you clean them off and close them when you're not using them. So here we go. If you're not familiar with Boom Gel Stain, it is ready to use acrylic paint that is really perfect for the bloom. And it works fantastic because it also helps create a beautiful cell interaction. So, um, I'm not sure why it works so well that way, but it creates um, these bubbly, beautiful, juicy cells. And 
works great in blooms, works great in bloom swipes. So very fun to add to what you're using. And I love to use them with pigments and with prism pour and all the sparklies. So I've become quite a fan. So this is the Pretty Petunia. Now I'm going to, I don't want to put this Envy right next to the Isadora. Um, because I kind of want them both to be a star in this. So here's Envy. So I'm kind of layering it on the other side of the boom gel. I know all of that is relatively pointless because we're going to swipe it. But that's what I'm doing. <clears throat> when we swipe it, it's all going to smoosh together. But, oops. Been having a lot of fun with these when they go well. When they don't go well, I kind of want to take my ball and go home, you know. But... When they go well, woohoo. So I'm when they don't go well, it's always my fault. It's me being a little heavy handed with the paint or whatever the case may be. So I'm gonna put waterfalls on the other side of this guy. I also have to be careful not to go too wide for my palette knife, but I'm using kind of a larger oops, look what I did. Palette knife. And I'm not using any regular tube paint, so it's gonna be a lot of sparkle. It's the only non-sparkly is Boom Gel. Prism Pour is like a metallic tube paint. So it's not like we're using all pigments either. It's just lots of sparkles, but that's the way I like things. So that's no problem for me. Okay, I don't wanna put this, well, maybe it won't matter. Maybe we'll just do this. Put it again here, and I'm gonna kind of put Isadora. I wanted to put it nearby it. So maybe I'll just put it right on the top. So pretty. Maybe I'll give it its own line and put it on the top. I mean, why not, you know? We're living on the edge. We don't have the puppy pool out already, so we are dangerous. I don't know, for some reason I just thought these would be so bright and cheery and the parrotfish would add a nice contrast and so hopefully I was right about that and it will be really good. So we'll give you your own lion because you're named after a diamond so you should be a star, right? A rare diamond at that. I tell you, I'm not so much of a major yellow fan but there's something about art that really challenges our horizons, I think. And of course, Leslie coming out with beautiful colors all the time certainly helps with that endeavor because now I use yellow a lot more than I used to. So thank you art and thank you color art for pushing me out of my comfort zone. Okay, so we put our stuff away. I'll come back and clean this guy in a minute. We can use our palette knife. If you follow our channel, you know the drill. I'm gonna put cell activator on the bottom of this and then smush it around here. I try not to do it right over it because I have been known to drip on paintings before and I don't really wanna to cry today. a lot of cell activator on this thing so now one thing that I've been struggling with is going too far into the pillow and losing my color so I'm gonna really try not to do that today my dog is making noises I still kind of did it it's because I want to do the swirlies you know and that wasn't my greatest effort, but I'm gonna let it sell up and I'll come back and mess with it in a second. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna visit that yet. So I'm gonna do the other side and then we'll mess with it. Okay, my cell activator is a wee bit thick, which for a swipe, you can get away with. If anything, on a swipe, I think, like if you're a three to, a three to one ratio cell activator person, 
that probably works great on a swipe. A four to one may not give you as much control as you might want. So if anything, you can get away with a thick cell activator on a swipe, or you may not be able to get away with it otherwise. Whew. I want to swipe from here, but I think I better start from here. And then I'll do something with that guy in a second with a smaller knife. <sighs> because that wasn't my greatest effort either. But I also have this little guy. This little guy. So what if I come over here and take him and kind of follow that same line? We'll find out. I'm not sure yet. All right, let me put away my cell activator. Well, so now all I'm gonna do is visit these sides, pop a couple bubbles, expand some of the parts where there's a lot of cell activator, because there's probably some paint underneath that could come out and make an appearance. So. So again, when you do this, you're not trying to blow holes into your cell activator. You just want to break the surface tension. It's very reactive to the paint underneath it. That's why you use the mixture you use for blooms, and that's why a cell activator doesn't always work on every paint recipe, is it's very reactive to what you have underneath it. Um, so you don't have to like create cells with your breath. You just need to break the tension so the cells that are already kind of doing their thing under there can come out. <clears throat> I used to try to make them and then wonder why I was blowing way into my paint. Well, that was why. So I kind of like what happened here. So let's kind of follow that over here. I'm not going to break that part up yet. Kind of like how it took away from the limey look I don't particularly like. <clears throat> trying to find a place to wipe my little stick off here. Okay. I like to get these little, they look like fractals, but that's probably not the right terminology. I like to draw them together so they look more intentional instead of like the paint's trying to jump into the pillow paint because that's kind of what it is doing all right also if you use a dark color pillow which is not our scenario today know that you're using an untinted deep base for them to color that Ooh. and it's going to be thinner so if you have problems with your colors trying to bleed into your base when it's thinner it's perfectly normal um, because the base is thinner, it doesn't have the same kind of structure like this does. If you add some a regular gel gloss into your pouring medium, um, that will really help that. So that's just a side random note of something that popped into my head just now. So nothing related to what we're doing here, but all right. So I'm really tempted to kind of move this around, but I think I better just go ahead and hack and slash where I'm going to and see what it does. I love that we added this yellow. I think that was such a, such a good idea. And if Chrissy hadn't been here, I probably would have been like, yeah, I'm not sure if I want to put it in this one. But. Okay. And the parrotfish green looks great with these colors. Okay, I think you guys can see. Let me turn on this light behind me, which I thought was already on. Okay, so I'm gonna see where we wanna make some tweaks. So where I want lines to be more noticeable, I'm gonna use the thicker side of this. Oh, there's a fly in here, of course. They always come when you paint, you know, jerks. Okay. 
I always, I think I always put the line in the same place. I was <laughs> putting a couple swipes that I've recently done away, and I was like, I always put the line in the same place. But you know what? You know, sometimes you got to go with what you're more comfortable with and then change it up later. And I think the reason for that is it generally follows the same structure <laughs> because of how I swipe it. Um, I think this one, we can go, this is all going to come off anyway. I hate that fly. I want him to die. And then this part is, obviously you always want to wipe your tool that you're using in between each swipe too. I thought about going down here. But I have this line going this way, and if I do that, all the interest that's there would kind of be messed up. So I can either come through here, which I obviously just did. <laughs> so much for the maybe, right? Or I can also, I don't know that I want to mess with that. Let's take a little spin and see. Whoa should be asking you because you're actually here, Chrissy. Okay. I'm shielding this with my person. So I'm just trying to get some movement in it while we still have some stuff on the surface. Look at this yellow. Can you see that? Really pretty. Ooh, that yellow. It's so pretty. I'm just opening it up a little. When you do this, you obviously want to be kind of careful that you're not just like wah, wah, because you're going to mess up your composition a lot. And if you do that, I'm going to hit up this edge with some pillow paint just because I'm afraid it's going to get a line on it from all the time I was wasting trying to figure that out. And right here, it's going to spin off. So don't be upset about wasting paint. Just know it's for a good cause. No paint was hurt in this decision. I really like these colors together. What a great idea, if I do say so myself. Um... There's a bubble. I want to get it. My hand is not steady. Okay. I got it. There's another one. I'm going to get a toothpick for it in a second. Okay, Christy, since you're here, do I, should I change anything about the composition? Nope. She's not going to say anything. She's shak shaking her head. No. You can talk. I'm, that's not going to upset anybody, but you don't have to. Okay. I really like it. And parrotfish green is just a beautiful color. And it played so well. So what I like about this blingit line is it's really holding its color very nicely. Um, even with those blues, it's it's just got a great, um, I don't know, it has a great texture when you mix it up. It, does great in swipes, great in blooms. A lot of these colors that we do on swipes, it's like I want to go and do them on a bloom. And then I have to go back and like rewatch the video to remember the colors. Um, Cause I want to go and do them on blooms cause I just enjoy them very much. So I've been trying to not only do the negative space swipes, but I really love them right now. And I'm, Certainly no pro at them, but I think the more you practice them, the more comfortable you get with the structure. I'm certainly not at the level of really embellishing like crazy, but I really just love the simplicity of these right now. And so we'll get there. So if you are bored with my weird middle of the wood round composition, we're going to get there. I just, uh, I really like them and I love I love the interest in them. So this um, 
the fact that we put a little bit of the Isadora on the top and then we put a little bit of it on the side. On the top we have kind of the, the gold effect of having it in there. And then on the side, we have, sorry, I have to wipe my hands. On the side, we have a very clear yellow section because of it. So I thought, I think that was kind of a good idea. Um, because even though the colors are going to blend a little bit, I love the way that happened. So I'm going to bring you down for a close up. Let me just clean my hands off. Hopefully, we have enough paint off of here. Seems like we do, it's not really wiggling. So I think it'll be okay. Uh, bring you down. Everybody, so here's our close up. Um, so you can see what I meant by the beautiful yellow right here. Look how pretty it is. And see how it created this like gold look. I just really love the way these colors played together. This NV has kind of a limey, it's not really lime because lime green is kind of yellow, but it's very bright and beautiful. And I kind of like what we did here where we added that little bit of extra cell activator to pull out that color. So yeah, let me know what you think. And um, I will post resin results in a short um, once we finish. Don't forget to check out the coupon codes below. I would love it if you would like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for all your continual support. And feel free to join our Fluid Art group on uh, Facebook. It's Fluid Art Friends, and the link is also below. Also, um, any pieces that we do most of the time are for sale. You're welcome to reach out if you're wanting to claim them before they get resin cured and go on Etsy. Um, just let me know. We can arrange that. So our email is in the description box below. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.